when we talk about logic, um, there are certain things that are called the laws of logic, and there's also certain things that are important from logic from a philosophical perspective. There's one that I find very interesting, and that's the law of non-contradiction. The law of non-contradiction simply states that something cannot be, so essentially I cannot be here speaking to you right now, and also be in you know, um, Europe right now at the same time speaking to you. Now, people try to talk about you know, where the world is going and quantum physics and so on, but I'm just talking about basic, you know, something cannot be here and also not be here at the same time in the same context. So when you say that something P, a proposition P is true, at the same time you're trying, and then you try to say that the proposition negative P is true, there's a problem because the question is, is P true or is negative P true? But to say that both of them are true would cause some problems. Let me explain this. If you ask me, Amos, where are you from? And I told you I'm from Nigeria, period. That's where I grew up and that's where I'm from. And then the next minute you ask me, Amos, where are you from? And I tell you I'm from Superior, Wisconsin, period. That's where I grew up and that's where I'm from. You're going to ask me, wait a second, Amos. You're saying that from age 0 to 15, you grew up in Nigeria. And at the same time, from age 0 to 15, you spent all 15 years in Superior, Wisconsin. Which is true and which is false? That's what you typically ask. And um, at that point, I would have to answer with one or the other. But I can't say both. I once heard a pro proverb people use in, in India, and the way they put it is that when you're trying to cross the street, you either cross the street or the car goes, but not both of you at the same time. You have to be careful when we look at the law of non-contradiction, because a lot of people think that, no, 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 it's just being closed-minded and so on. No. The law of non-contradiction simply states that something cannot be true and at the same time be false in the same context. That would be a problem. And I know that there's the issue of paradoxes and so on, but I'm just talking about the basic proposition of something being true and false at the same time. This law is very important because when it comes to the issue of Christianity or worldviews, people will say or make statements that they believe are true. But if those statements are true, they automatically exclude anything that says that they are false in a sense. And this is a quick example from John 14, 6 in the Bible. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so what Jesus is saying is that he's the truth. And so if we try to put any other truth in there or try to get to the Father in any other way, we're going to get to a dead end. That's essentially what Jesus said. And if that's the case, we then have to ask ourselves, if Jesus is who he claimed he was, that means that when we say that Jesus, one, didn't even exist in history, that contradicts the fact that Jesus did exist and he did die and he came back from the dead and he lived on, on this earth, historically speaking. And so if Jesus walked the earth, that means that if anybody says Jesus never existed, that's a contradiction to the first one. The question is, which is true? At that point, we have to go back to history and search and see if Jesus actually lived on the earth. So we see that law of non-contradiction has a place to play, or a role to play, in understanding arguments or uh, discussions on the issue of beliefs. And uh, we shouldn't always run away from discussions or, or, or debates on this. We should seek to find out where does history tell us this happened or that, or what does reality say about this? But let's not run away from it. So the law of non-contradiction, again, is a good tool to have anyone, I believe, everyone should know it and should be able to use it to lay down their point. Let me give you a quick example of this as I round this up. When somebody talks, if someone's parents come home and they find out that the cookies are gone and they say, who stole the cookies? And somebody says, John took the cookies. Well, if John took the cookies, that means that it couldn't have been Beth or anybody else. It means that John took the cookies. But if somebody else comes and says, no, actually, John doesn't even exist, then there's a problem. Because if John took the cookies, John would need to exist. And if John exists, that means that if, if John exists and he took the cookies, that means Beth is innocent. However, if John didn't take the cookies, then we could put the blame on other people. The reason why I put this is this way is because some people essentially, with what they're saying, is that they would say John took the cookies, Beth also took the cookies, and somebody else took the cookies, and they are all true at the same time when we know that only one person did it. So essentially, in order to avoid contradictions, we need to make sure we ask ourselves, this statement I've made, does it conflict with another statement? And if it does, what does reality say about it? Because reality is what we can then go back to, because reality is what is. Logic gets um, interesting as we go on, and I'm just hoping that this will be a good introduction into the field of logic. And the next set of videos on this will hopefully clarify what I'm trying to say. So, today's lesson again, the law of non-contradiction. Something cannot be 
true and at the same time be false in the same context at the same time. So I hope that that gives you some insight into logic.